Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shear, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. $99 includes shipping. Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late. Today's guest is the Sergeant from AmericanPreppersOnline.com. Sergeant, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, when when did you first wake up to the need to prepare? That was... uh. Well, quite a few years ago, I guess. Not long after I got out of the military. Uh, after being in the military, I came out and did some work for the uh, sheriff's department and uh, really started seeing the ugly side of the world. After that, I got to talking to a few people and met a couple of preppers. And I'll be, t- I'll be honest with you, when I first met, met them and they started talking to me about prepping, I thought they were crazy. I really did. But one of them challenged me on one. I, he had said something about Agenda 21, and I told him, oh, that was just a crock. And he challenged me to prove him wrong. Well, when I got to digging, I realized I couldn't prove him wrong. So that got me thinking, well, what else are they saying that I'm thinking is conspiracy theory that isn't? And the more I dug, the more concerned I got. So I, my wife is into it just pretty about as deep as I am, I guess. That's a blessing right there because uh, it's it's one of those things that as a man, you know, you have a, a biblical responsibility to care for your family. And a lot of men – will we'll sort of wake up to the need to prepare. Their normalcy bias will be shaken like yours was. And, and I think that it's it's more common for people that have been in the military or law enforcement because they have seen, you know, what it looks like when things go bad. And they're more aware of how, how fragile uh, our society is. So I think it's a little easier to shake them out of that normalcy bias. But, uh, you know, as a man, when we wake up to that and then, and then our other half isn't on board – and and you know it's your responsibility, but yet you have to fight to to be able to to do your job. I think that that's frustrating for a lot of people. So uh, that's a that's a real blessing to have a wife that's on board. Uh, I'm in the same boat as you are. My wife's very very supportive. Um, she helps me with the show. She does all of the the um, the type editing for for the uh, for the website and also for my books and. Uh, and uh, and and you know, and she's a big couponer too, so she she does a lot of the the food stockpiling and the uh, soap and toilet paper and, and and things like that. She does a lot of stockpiling by couponing, so it is it's a big blessing to have a mate that's on board. Yeah, my wife and I have been married for thirty five years, and, and, I... and that's a blessing too. You're you're beating the odds. <laughs> <laughs> she's a wonderful woman, and I love her. So she keeps me in line. Fantastic. Yeah, and I think we need a little of that sometimes because uh, she she keeps me off the edge sometimes, you know, because I can I, – left to my own devices. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Something you said about the uh, military and the uh, law enforcement having a particular interest in this is – I think that's because most people that I've met seem to live – they, they seem to believe that there's a whole lot more good out in the world than there is evil. And when you're in the military and are in law enforcement, you find out that's not necessarily true. There are a lot of people out there that would, at any opportunity, do others harm. And if the world or the government was to collapse, we would all... Uh, these people would just be set loose, and that's a horrible, horrible thought. Yeah, it is, and um, 
for the folks that are just watching Fox and and that's that's their only news that they're getting, you know, they they uh they don't hear a lot about things like agenda 21 and uh you know, they don't understand that this is you know, we didn't just get here by accident. There's there's been there's been folks that have that have had uh, bringing our society to the point to where we've got men going in the women's bathroom. Uh, this is something that's been long thought out, and uh, they've been corrupting our minds and our children through the education system, through entertainment, and it's just uh, and it has its tentacles in just about every single aspect of our lives. And uh, and if you're just watching Fox, you, you're probably not too turned on to that fact. That's absolutely right. Um, and God help you if you're watching any of the other mainstream <laughs> news channels. <laughs> you're even worse off. No chance. I, I know a lot of my uh, a lot of my readers know that I work at the University of Louisiana, and I was to make a point that that you were just talking about. One of the directors of, uh, at the university and I were talking one day here about. I don't know, I guess probably about six months or so ago. And he was, he said, yeah, he said, man, he said, somebody just was telling me about something called an EMP. And I said, yeah, electromagnetic pulse. He looked at me and he says, you know about those? A lot of, a lot of us do. And I was amazed that someone in his position with a university would have actually no idea about them, how they're, how they're created or any of that or what damage they could do. So him and I had a nice long talk and, uh, they actually, he, the university wound up doing an article about EMPs and, uh, I have some projects going right now on developing different ways to, uh, help protect items from EMPs. But they're a long way from being there. But it's good that that folks are starting to become aware that there is such a thing as an EMP. Um, even in the the Republican debates, which you know you're not going to get a whole lot of use, useful information out of there. But you did have Mike Huckabee and 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 I think even Cruz mention uh, the the possibility of an EMP attack at least. Yes, absolutely, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that. You know just how devastating something like that can be. It's it's tremendous. I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, next to a plague, it's one of the worst things that could happen. Yeah, it possibly worse. Uh, we had Dr. Peter Pry on the show um, back last fall, I suppose it was, and uh, of course he did a study with the. The EMP Commission for Congress. So, I mean, they all know about this. This isn't this isn't anything new to anybody that's in uh, uh, in any level of government, especially federal government. Uh, it, this is something they they regularly talk about in the, in the Senate and the Congress. Uh, they don't do anything about it, but they do talk about it. And um, the the Congressional EMP Commission said that they believe 90% of America would probably die off in the first six months after an EMP just because uh, uh, folks don't know how to, to get water. Um, most people in the, in the population centers, you could give them a chicken. They wouldn't know how to skin it or kill it or, or – and, and most of them even wouldn't even know how to cook it if you, if you had it skinned and killed for them. So uh, we're we're in a really really bad state in our society, and like we said, that's that's not something that we we didn't get here by accident, and you know, and we're talking about all this stuff, and and uh, I I haven't even let you tell us a, a little bit more about American Preppers Online yet. When did when did you get started with that? Uh, just talk to us about the site. Uh, what inspired you to start writing it, and and all of that. I started uh, PreppersOnline.com. AmericanPreppersOnline.com back uh, about a year and a half to two years ago. I have several friends that were preppers, and after talking to them, they kept telling me, look, you ought to start a blog. You ought to start a blog. So I said, I, I don't know. But they, I finally caved in and said, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I started writing, and I wrote, right, right now I write four articles a week plus uh, Mondays is uh, Video Monday, 
where I put up different videos, but I enjoy it tremendously because I feel like I'm giving back to a lot of the, the people who have helped me when I was first learning how to prep. And when you first start out, you're, you're like a babe in the woods, I guess. You try to learn everything. You're pestering everybody to learn how to do things. And But after you get further along and you get more comfortable and you do some trial and error items, you eventually learn that that helping others is really the best you can hope for. I mean, nobody's going to survive this by themselves. So we have to try to help each other and spread as much knowledge as we can. And that's what I try to do with American Preppers Online. Now, you're absolutely uh, right about that. The the whole lone wolf thing, that does not uh, – that doesn't work out very good because uh, – uh, you you've been in the military. I'm sure you can tell us that uh, it'd be tough to pull a 24 hour uh, security duty, wouldn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And you you just can't do it. You can't pull security, uh, work in the garden, cook, clean, and rest all at the same time. It's just not going to happen. You you need other people. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out Silver.com today. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. We just passed the third anniversary of the Prepper Recon podcast, and it couldn't have happened without you. To say thanks, I want to send you a free PDF copy of the 7-Step Survival Plan. It's a basic blueprint that will help you to prioritize your efforts and make sure you're not missing any important areas of prepping. To get your free copy, simply go to PrepperRecon.com and click the 7 Step Survival Plan free PDF banner that's directly under the menu bar at the top of the homepage. Thanks again for three great years of the Prepper Recon podcast. And you've written, cool. a, you've written a really good article on American Preppers Online, and it's about get home bags. And I think that that's something that, that doesn't get enough attention or it's overlooked altogether. So we wanted to get you on the show to talk about get home bags specifically today. Uh, can you start by giving us a brief description of what a get home bag is? Sure. A get home bag is a bag that you carry in your car or with you when you go out of town. So if something happens, like let's say your car breaks down, uh, an EMP hits, uh, you're off on a trip, and the world comes to a crashing end. Anything, anytime you're away from home, you should have a get-home bag with the supplies and materials you need to start walking. Um, these are critical. I mean, I can't I can't stress that enough. A lot of people I meet, they they say, "Oh, well, I don't need one. I only live five miles from work." Well, yeah, you do, because let's say a tornado or something comes through uh, and you have to walk home. Some cataclysmic action happens. That uh, walk that you're thinking is probably going to take you eight hours could suddenly become 24 hours. You've got streets that will be blocked. You might have to reroute yourself several times just to get, just to travel a mile or two to get around places that would normally, would, you just walk right through. It's, it's like having car insurance. If you don't have a, a get home bag and something happens, you're stuck. You really are. Imagine facing being out of town or, or even 20 miles from home. If something terrible happens and you're forced to walk home, what are you going to do then? And you, How are you going to get home without a bag? Yeah. And, and you mentioned uh, rerouting. 
So uh, I guess one of the obvious things you're going to need in that get home bag is uh, some navigational equipment. And you talked about an EMP, so it probably should be something beside your phone. Do you do you recommend having a compass and a, a map? That's going to cover the area from at least your workplace to your homes in case you had to reroute. And then also, uh, can you uh, tell us a few more of the basic supplies we should have in a get-home bag? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I recommend having a compass and a map with at least two or three uh, possible paths for getting home. If one's blocked, then you have an alternate route. Uh Things, other things you should have in that bag, though. You need to have a, a good six blade knife. Uh, you also need to have water. Now, water is one of those things that it, it's very critical. But if you lit, a lot of people tend to take a whole bunch of bottles of water and throw it in a bag and throw it in the back of their car and say, okay, I'm good. No, you're not. You try walking with all that weight because water is very heavy. What you, what you need to stop and think about when you put together a get-home bag is weight. Water's heavy. How can I reduce that weight to that water? Like me, I keep two bottles in my, of water in my bag, basically just to have the bottle. I use I have a, a live straw because living in Louisiana, there's water around here. But... You're not going to drink it without some way to purify it. Another thing is food. You might not think you need food, but you do. Uh, if you get stuck out on the road and walking strenuous, let alone walking with a pack on your back, you need food. Uh, again, weight is a big concern. So what I do is, I bought, bought the uh, 72 hour SOS uh, pack. And what it is, it's a, uh, they're cubes. And they're designed to give you enough energy and enough calories for 72 hours. I, they're like four or five bucks, I believe. And you buy one of those, throw them in your, in your get home bag. You got it there in case you do get home. Uh, let's see what else. Some other things you're going to need. You're going to need a flashlight. Uh, you're going to need, I also recommend a, uh, a good chem light to put in there. If you're walking at night, you can hang that on your belt and leave your hands free and still see the road ahead of you. Uh, bug spray. Bug spray is a big deal if you live in Florida, Louisiana or any place where there's a lot of standing water. And another thing you can consider is that once you get your bag built, once you've got it put together, you need to put it on your back and try walking with it for a week. You'll be surprised that you've either done it right or you've done it wrong. It'll be easy enough to tell. If your shoulders start hurting after a couple of miles, your bag's too heavy. You need to find a way to lighten it up. Now, some of my readers have, have suggested that uh, what they do is they take and they have layers of bags that they keep in their uh, car. And what it is is they've got a simple small bag, lightweight bag. If it's uh, if they're sure that they can get home with, without any major problems and they're very close, you know, four or five miles. I think they got another bag that they can attach to that one that uh, has enough supplies in it to get them, say, 10 or 10 to 15 miles. And then they have another bag that they keep back there that they can uh, attach to those, both of those two if they have a very long way to walk home. So something I need to stress here, if you're going to put food other than SOS bars and you're Get home bag, you need to check the expiration dates on them. You also need to pull everything out of your get home bag at least once over two or three months and go through it. It will help you remember where you have everything stored in it, while at the same time, it will help you uh, 
familiarize yourself with the uh, foods and stuff you have in there and when you need to change them. Last thing you want if you're having to walk home is to get food poisoned for sure. Uh, something else. Some of my readers have, have talked to me about they're they're older. Okay, uh, they have problems walking. You know, what could they do to make it get to help get home easier? So. There are a lot of little carts out there, foldable carts and stuff that you can get uh, that are made for, like, hikers and stuff like that that actually connect to your waist and allow you to carry a lot of weight with very, very little stress on your back. And for anyone who has a bad back, that that would absolutely be the way to go. The last thing you want to do is have to walk a long way carrying heavy bag. And probably another good thing is, uh, I, I personally I wear a lot of flip flops, and then and and uh, because I live in a sort of a semi rural area, uh, you know I'm I have pretty good distances from from anywhere from my house is going to be, you know a, a minimum of five or ten miles. So uh, what I've got is I got my old gym shoes that you know they're a little they're a little raggedy they don't look so nice anymore but there's nothing wrong with them so I've just stuck those in my truck. So, uh, you know, if I were ever in a position and I had to walk, I wouldn't be walking 10 miles in flip-flops because that's going to be pretty uncomfortable. And and for folks that maybe, you know, they're thinking about a, a long commute between their house and their job and they've got work, you know, dress shoes that they wear for work or a lady that's, uh, you know, well, wears heels every day, uh, that's definitely going to be something they're going to want to think about is some other type of footwear uh, that they can keep in the in the in the car as well. Right. You definitely need a good pair of walking shoes. You also need some dry clothes in a uh, in a watertight bag that you can keep in there. There's nothing more miserable than walking while you're soaking wet. The other thing is a good poncho. I mean, take the time and invest in a good poncho, uh, a good heavy-duty one. Play, the great thing about a poncho is that you can put your pack on your back, Put the poncho on, and it'll cover both you and the poncho and the uh, backpack. Those are those are essential items that you need to have, along with uh, you might also also want to have a sleeping bag with you as well, and a, a small blanket of some type. If nothing else, at least get some of the uh, oil uh, face blankets and put in there. Now, when I say uh, sleeping bag, a lot of people think of, you know, the regular, I'm going camping type sleeping bag. You don't have to put one of those. Uh, they make one that I think it's called, a company called SOL makes them. And uh, what it is is it's a very lightweight, very compact emergency sleeping bag. Sleeping bag. And takes up very little room in your pack. That would be a, a, a great thing to have if you're stuck out on the road and you find yourself needing to hunker down somewhere for the night. It can make all the difference in the world, especially if you live in a cold, in a, a very cold climate. And then you were talking about uh, the life drop. That's a really good uh, low cost solution for for purifying water. Um, is there is there any other things that you think uh, make a good uh, water filter as well? Just so folks have some options. Do you like do you like like uh, catadine or you like uh, um, iodine tablets? What I are, like what catadine. Are some... uh, I'm not real big on iodine tablets uh, simply because I've drank water that we where you used uh, iodine tablets to purify it and it tastes like crap. Yeah, <laughs> I know. A good water it tastes like iodine, <laughs> and if and you I, and if you use bleach, it's going to taste like bleach. Exactly. So, but they have the ones that you can buy now that you can actually put them in the in if you have a cam, uh, backpack with a camel pack on it, you can actually put them in the line from the camel pack. It's it's kind of like a 
Life's crawl on steroids, I guess you'd say. But it's designed, you cut the, cut the uh, hose, and it's got the little clips and everything, and you just put this right in line to the mouthpiece that you used to drink. Now that's very cool. I suppose it's probably going to take a little it's bit more suction. but you uh, drink. Right. So those are great to have. I've also got one of those I keep handy. Uh, I have the the shaded iron, and I have about three or four different ones. Uh, but uh, in my get home pack, I have primarily the live straw. Hey, Brothers and Patriots, that's the end of the first half of my interview with the sergeant from American Preppers Online. In Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams about the judgment coming upon America for rejecting God's word. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack sending the country into a technological dark age. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith with and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.